Hello there. Thanks for tuning in. What an honor to discover the hands of public figures whom I really admire. Georgia O'Keeffe is one of them. And here we go. Her hands, her art, and the woman. George O'Keeffe, a 20th century American artist. She was called the mother of American modernism, art free of irony and cynicism, innovative, aesthetic, deriving from within, created as a medium for emotions and moods. So what do her hands say about the woman and her art? Do they reflect her choices and her personality? Let's see. Her hands and fingers are long and narrow. Her hand shape is dominant in the water element. Hand analysts trained in our system of palmistry call these the hands of the poetess, the empath. Water flows and seeks to merge and to connect deeply. Highly sensitive personality. Owners of these hands are very sensitive, ethereal, inward-looking by nature. Some people with these kind of hands can be too sensitive, nervous, perhaps depressive in personality, taking on too much of the environment around her, or stuck in destructive emotional cycles. So let's take a close-up view, see what else we see in her hands. So what about Georgia O'Keeffe's sensitivity pads found on her fingertips? That's those little bumps on the ends of her fingertips. This adds more to the theme. It's as if she has extra equipment to feel out what or who she comes in contact with. So what about her heart lines? We call these the passionate nurturer. Actually, it's the combination of the fiery heart line and the water heart line. The fire of passion and the water flowing of the nurturer. So this is the ability to deeply and passionately identify with the intimacy of her subject. At her best, caring deeply while feeling the fire of her own passions, the passionate nurturer. And finally, her sizable Venus mounts further reflect the life of the senses, as well as interest in aesthetics and balance. You know, beautiful, the senses, the body. Phew, we have a theme here, right? And this is her left hand, but her right hand has the same pads, the same heart line, and the same Venus mounts. So just how could O'Keefe function in this world and accomplish so much given her sensitive nature? Well, let's see. Her thumbs. She has rather long, straight, firm-looking thumbs. And this means that she has a good measure of self-determination, willpower, practical action for doing, uh, results using her logic. Then we add her heart headlines, not her heart lines. We talked about those already. We add her headlines. The headline goes right straight across the hand, very long, very straight. So that's about rational, logical, inquiring mental activities, curiosity, interest, really challenging her mental abilities, logical and rational, as I said. The ability to analyze and observe what she is seeing and feeling, even while she is feeling it. This, of course, is at her best. What a balanced package we have here. The ability to bring her highly sensitive aesthetic qualities into practical focus to become one of the most renowned and beloved American artists of her time. So let's take a brief look at her art and her person to just see just how her hands reflect her art and her life. Some thought her images evoke a deep exploration of what it means to be female. This is a real close-up of a flower. Whether she was painting a skull or a flower, she did so with stark precision and deep intimacy. Again, that balance of precision and the inward connection to the subject. Observing natural forms at close range. And then her skull and bones paintings. Of her bone and skull paintings, she, to me, she says, they are as beautiful as anything I know. 
The bones seem to cut sharply to the center of something that is keenly alive on the desert, even though it is vast and empty and untouchable. Again, that precise look, that deep curiosity, that deep inward imagining there's something at the center that is alive. Of her flower paintings, again, a close-up of an iris here. If you take a flower in your hand and you really look at it, it's your world for a moment. She is intimately immersing herself in her subject, escaping into another reality. Again, perhaps evoking the female uh, anatomy, a lot of people say. She denies it, but a lot of people say that that's what they, they get from the paintings. And she said, oh, that's okay, if that's what you get, that's what you get. But again, uh, a deep look at her subject, a very close look at her subject. And what about O'Keefe the woman? She's been referred to as intensely private, sensitive, nervous, a prickly personality, ethereal, a loner, uncomfortable in crowds. She made few public appearances in her life. One of her most famous quotes that I think captures so much of what we've been talking about in terms of the dichotomy or perhaps the balancing factor, I have been absolutely terrified every moment of my life. I've been absolutely terrified every moment of my life and I've never let it keep me from doing a single thing I wanted to do. So that driven, driven, self-determining aspect of her personality helped with that second part. I've never let it keep me from doing a single thing I wanted to do. She was practical, precise, and driven. And thank God for her prickly nature and making the right choices to withdraw and live a good portion of her life in the Taos area of New Mexico. During the last 30 years of her long life, she painted in desolate areas, mostly, most famously, Ghost Ranch. You'll see many of her paintings from Ghost Ranch. This spot was referred to O'Keefe as untouched, an untouched, lonely feeling place. Perhaps she was touched too deeply as a human and saw that untouched, removed place through her paintings and her lifestyle choices. This is an homage to one of my favorite painters and her hands so reflect her life. I hope you felt her presence as you listen to this and thanks so much for listening in.